So a warm welcome to today's webinar. Um, today is the 20th of December 2017. My name is Stefan Frederichowski with a very complicated last name. Uh, usual time, everything as usual. The only thing is it will be the last webinar for this year. But uh, the good news is uh, we will have the next one already starting in January. And um, you will find the two uh, webinars maybe already on the web page of uh, JFD. Um, but at least if you have an account at JFD, you will be notified by email as well. But anyhow, um, yeah, the new the next two topics uh, there will be one thing um, about bitcoins and uh, maybe you have seen already that i have here one screen with bitcoins uh, that will be an interesting stuff to talk about uh, bitcoins from a more statistical point of view mm. um yeah uh, because uh, you we can trade that and we can use um, well-known behavior but we need some adjustments and we have to look more carefully to our trades when it comes to trading bitcoins but that's one announcement for uh, next month and the other one um, yeah we will change our perspective that means uh, let's think we are a broker that you are a broker and what kind of business model uh, we will have them so that's an interesting topic as well and it will give you a deep insight into trading from the other side so from the broker's perspective let's see uh, but anyhow and once again a warm welcome uh, also in the name of jfd um, the broker of choice here for our webinars and uh, for our trading activities as always you can contact me directly here via email you see my email address i uh, know i have a very complicated last name so it's s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com and if you have any further questions just um, get in touch with me via email i hope i can help you further and uh, the other remark um, you will find already the download as uh, the slides um, from today's webinar um, you can download them via the go to webinar control panel so that's uh, easy uh, that's an easy job and uh, so you have the slides later we will have some additional excel sheets and uh, if you have interest in those just send me an email you see the address and I will make sure that you get all the um, Excel sheets as well. Today's topic, trade sequences, Martingale. Okay, um, and the long term is, uh, is that a, a profitable trading approach? Um, but uh, I use here the shortcut because otherwise it would not fit on the slides anymore uh, later. So it's the second time that we talk about martingale trading approaches. And normally everybody would say, hey, martingale, that's uh, devil's work. Uh, so you should not use anything like that uh, for, for trading. And in principle, you are right. But there are ways to tame that kind of approach. And I think it was July when we talked first about uh, those uh, approaches. Um, yes, and uh, we found a way to tame that approach. And uh, just as a um, short start here, uh, that's what we trade here. Uh, that's an account statement of uh, one uh, strategy. And I just want to show you that example uh, because you will, during that webinar as well, you will um, hear statements like how to tame Martin Gale. So, and in this case, uh, a few months ago, we uh, looked carefully of how to introduce a stop loss into the trading and even what has been more important to select the right underlyings for that kind of approach that approach here is not really martingale it's more a grid approach so it's a rebuy in case of losses um, but we have a stop loss for the overall position and as you can see here and um, you know that i'm very transparent here with my accounts that that stop loss uh, has been activated once during that period here mm -hmm. um, you see here so 
that was a stop loss. And to have that kind of stop loss is simply to have not an unlimited risk for that kind of approach. And you see, it took two months to recover, and now everything is uh, once again well. Uh, strategy is running well, up to now 0.5% per month, but um, that will increase uh, during the next uh, couple of weeks uh, because that deep step south is uh, within that kind of calculation. So basic approach there has been a rebuy in case of losses, but not by doubling our position size, for example. No, it was a linear approach. So we rebuy with the same uh, um, amount or the same position size. I repeat myself, the key was to, to look for underlyings which have not a, um, a quite well trendy behavior. So we need um, underlyings which more or less wiggle around. That was the past and now we come to the next point or uh, how we can do another approach uh, and we will look exactly for the opposite underlyings. Uh, when I say opposite underlyings, I mean today we will look for those underlyings which show a strong trend behavior or at least from time to time or for a little bit longer period so that they do not wiggle around uh, as those uh, on my previous slide here. Mm. So uh, of course those underlyings will be um, related for example to Japanese yen because that is a typical underlying which shows on short term a more trendy behavior and uh, that is key for today's webinar. What else? Um, yeah as always I have to show this slide at least once and especially today I think it's even more important we because we talk about a risky approach and Maybe your final conclusion about that approach will, okay, nice to hear, nice to see how it works and how um, things can be set up in Excel to investigate such a strategy, but that's not mine. Uh, okay, that's a conclusion, but others may think, hmm, why not? Let's see. But um, so here's a risk disclaimer. So when it finally comes to your own trading activities, of course, you do them for your own and by your own and on your own responsibility. So the um, topics of today that um, are that I make a short recap about the origin of Martin Gale approaches and how they normally would work. Um, and um, but it's just a short recap from from uh, July webinar. Uh, will take a few minutes, but then everybody is up to speed to that kind of topic. Then we will do a first approach, but that will be done totally in a chart. And uh, so that we get used to what I want to show here uh, and how um, today's approach will work. Later then, we come to the clue of how to tame today uh, the Martingale approach. And um, the main aspect here will be that we apply risk reward ratios bigger than one and um, you will see later that that will enable us to not double always our position and to get it uh, much less aggressive and uh, so that will be the key element for uh, that kind of martingale approach i will show you some profitable setups for four underlyings here and you see immediately okay that are different underlyings um, which really show that short at least short term trendy behavior um, there are a few others um, we could add but uh, those are the one i will share here with you and i will summarize all the parameters uh, for that kind um, of trading activity i will make a short outlook uh, how that might work on h1 as well because we will focus ourselves on d1 today um, that I do everything here um, starting wise uh, on D1 is simply because then those Excel sheets um, are more handy. I mean, um, we don't have that a huge amount of data and uh, so then we can do everything uh, a little bit easier. In principle, it works on um, 
with the same Excel sheets on H1. But then we have uh, thousands, uh, more nearly 100,000 uh, lines within that Excel sheet, and that's always a little bit tricky. So let's start with Martingale. How? What is the origin of Martingale? Uh, originally, uh, it stems from the roulette table, and um, I have to admit I'm not really um, familiar with with the roulette table. Uh, I have visited uh, a casino. Uh, how does it call casino i don't know exactly the english uh, name but anyhow i think you you understand what i mean normally what you do there if you play martingale uh, roulette um, you put money on red or black and then you will either win or lose the key is now if you lose with the first round then you double your pool. So if you start with, let's say, one euro and um, you would win, okay, then you would get an extra euro. But if you lose, then um, uh, if you lose, then you will double your pool. That means for the next round, you put two euros uh, on the table, either red or black. Um, if you think a little bit further, it does not really depend on um, what color you, cho uh, you choose. Uh, you could always uh, take the red one, uh, and we will do it mathematically uh, in a minute. But um, what does it mean? Always doubling. In case you finally win uh, the next round, then you will recover all your losses previously. In case you win, then you go back to your original pool, so back to the one euro as uh, uh, the beginning. So that's all. That's a martingale approach. If you lose, you double. That's uh, the short summary of that approach. And nice anecdote, um, Casanova um, has been a gambler of that approach and, of course, not very successful. But anyhow, let's see what happens if you do something like that. Um, I have here uh, just an Excel sheet which is simulating that kind of approach and it's simulating oh here's, um, i will guide you because uh, the naming here is in german but anyhow so we have a random um, number between zero and one and that is this uh, 0.85 for example and then we because i i, I don't care here about uh, the zero on the roulette table, which has a different color. So I have a threshold of 0.5, which means in my case, if that random number between zero and one is above that threshold, I have a loser. And if it's below, then I have a winner. That's all. Let's look here. So first round, um, um, the number is above the threshold, so I will lose. So I lose five euros in uh, here. So I start with 200 euros, then I go down to 195. Next round, I double my pool, means I put 10 euros on the table. Once again, a loser, I lose that. So it goes down by 10 euros. Next, perfect. Uh, double, but now I win and I get 20 euros. So I recover all the previous losses and you see what happens. Finally, now look, let's look more from a trading perspective. Then we can calculate that, that equity here. And after 100 uh, rounds, you see I have a steady increase of my, my uh, account or my, my uh, wallet here at the wallet table. And that's all. The downside is, of course, those deep dips here, um, like here. And the good thing for doing uh, that kind of analysis with Excel is I can just randomize everything new. So it means I just press F9 and I get a new sequence of trades or uh, roulette rounds. You see what happened here? Oh, God. Mm. Uh, my account is ruined. That means uh, I went uh, through the zero line. Um, and I still could recover, no problem. But um, you see, I would need some extra money to put on the table um, because you see the, those uh, red numbers here. I can recover, 
but I need more money. And every uh, now this time it's okay, and next time once again okay. Here ruin, but not that severe. But you see what happens. So in principle, <laughs> it's a nice approach. Uh, we have a steady slope in our equity. But what's the but? Two buts. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, that means you need unlimited resources. So your wallet must be unlimited. One condition. Second condition, you need a roulette table with, without a limit. And that's, um, as far as I know, um, not typical because there's always a limit, maybe 1,000 euro, maybe 2,000, 10,000. I don't know the, those numbers. And those limits <laughs> yeah, um, will cancel your strategy, more or less. But on the other hand, you see what happens? Nice increase. Nice increase, very good slope of equity. Um, and even the zero uh, in the real life of roulette would not ruin here that approach, but uh, the slope would be a little bit less. But the limits are the limits, and that is limited resources and uh, the limit at uh, the table. So that's the, base, uh, the basics of uh, Martingale. So just remember uh, always, normally you double um, you double your, your pool if you lose, and that's all. We know that that kind of approach, um, let's do an intermediate conclusion here, um, is a guarantee to total bankruptcy. Okay, and still I have you here within my <laughs> webinar. Um, so how can we tame that? And to get an approach for trading which has a chance to generate profits as we like. And as I mentioned already, um, how to tame here is exactly not doubling every round. And we can do something from our normal trading activities that we play around with a risk reward ratio of a trade. Maybe right now you have a lot of question marks about that, um, but let's start in the chart in order to get a feeling of what I'm talking here about. And maybe one uh, other pre-comment here, um, that kind of strategy has been um, developed or the, the idea has been born on the WOT, the word uh, of trading, uh, the trade fair uh, in November in Frankfurt. Just talking to another trading guy, uh, it's a um, visitor here uh, from, from the German part of that uh, webinar. And we talked uh, in the evening about an approach. And honestly, it's uh, most part is here his job. And uh, I know he likes that I talk about that. Um, so the basic idea stems from, from that guy called Martin. Um, and uh, let me show what we talk and then later create a real strategy out of that. So let's start with a chart in order to, to get a real feeling for that strategy. Let's go here for um, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And uh, in order that not everybody is looking to the charts behind, uh, let me um, enlarge everything. And now we have here a chart. Let's go for H1. And the original idea, um, Martin told me, he applies another strategy, which uh, has also been discussed here during our webinars, and that is open range breakout strategies. We, we have a typical setup for uh, Euro, uh, Japanese yen, for example, and um, yeah, how does it work? Normally, um, and don't take the numbers and ranges, which I will draw here in that chart um, as, as given uh, as a trading setup. No, it's just for, for illustration purpose only. Let's say we are uh, at the end of that eight o'clock candle here and we, have, we apply a breakout strategy, um, meaning we place one order here and the other one 
uh, let's say this one here is range. And now you see we have a range and we place two orders like in every um, open range breakout setup, a buy stop to the north and a sell stop to the south. Okay, um, later and um, we will have uh, a trigger for our trade and that trigger would be to the north. And that would normally mean, okay, we we delete, we cancel our sell stop order, and we now go in the expectation of um, a breakout, meaning the price went up. As the example here is perfect, uh, that's the reason why I use exactly that. And um, let's say we have here our take profit, um, so that would be a risk reward ratio of uh, about one. And our trade um, three, four hours later would have reached our take profit level. Perfect. So we don't need any Martingale or something like that. Everything went well. Open range breakout. Uh, we have a winner trade. We wait for the next day for the next open range breakout within the next day. Okay. Everything went well with that trade. Let me manipulate a little bit my ranges so that I get a different example. Let's assume we place uh, the lower line here, the upper line maybe a little bit uh, down. Let's here and that we start our approach already uh, here. So that is the point in time when we place those two orders. Let's start here, from, from, from here. What does it mean? Now, after placing the order, a little bit later, my short trade would have been triggered. But finally, it does not went further south. And now the idea is, uh, let's do this here a little bit higher, or maybe even a little bit lower. Um, let's go here. So. We have been triggered here to the south, and already two hours later, our stop loss, which is always the opposite side of a range, uh, would have been triggered. Okay, now we have uh, lost one R, one risk unit, or whatever lot size you, you use here, uh, so we have a loser trade. And now, let's think Martingale. What we would do is, we would now not delete when the first trade has been triggered. We would not delete our buy stop order on the north side. No, we would have changed even that order to the double size. That would mean after we reach our stop loss here on the opposite side, our buy, our long trade would have been triggered, but now with a double risk. Okay, how does it went further? Easy. Take profit, still, let's say, 1R distance. So our our long trade would have been triggered, um, then went south against us, and once again, now it went north, and finally we would hit our target value, our take profit value. And we would have recovered our first loser trade. Well, that looks already not that bad. So we could recover our loser in the second trial. So that's the basic idea here. By doubling the risk, still takes the take profit level as it has been. So one R distance. But now, if we are in the second round, we have doubled, like in the original Martingale approach, our um, risk value, our amount of money we have on risk, and we could recover in the second round. Perfect. You may think, wow, that's great. Uh, does it work always is that good? No. Um, let's make a new example. Let me um, put a little bit the lines aside that we see a little bit more what would happen if we have such an approach in in a situation which is not that good. Um, let's go here. 
let's start here and let's think we would have placed um let's start for example here starting time let's say would be this line here so here we start we would place our two orders our buy stop to the north sell stop to the south and that would be maybe that kind of open range breakout setup you would see what happens so we would have been triggered to the south here a few hours later our stop loss would have been reached so we would change the direction of our trade to a long trade here our trade would be running 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 until here and once again we would be in the stop loss now we would have to double once again our um, our trade so we would go south with a short trade unfortunately once again our trade would hit stop loss we would have to double once again and you see what happens stop loss here doubling here doubling 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 and finally that trade would have reached take profit maybe around here I have not counted exactly how often I said doubling, 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 but I think it was at least uh, five times. Okay, that's still manageable if you start with a not too high value of original risk, but you can even think about even worse uh, situations so that you have to double once again, once again, once again. The Taming situation is now the following. Let's start with an Excel sheet that we know what I'm talking about here. Um, let's recap what we have up to now. So what we what we did up to now is we placed our take profit in one R distance, so with a risk reward ratio of one and let's start with an original uh, just the name that number size you can think in lots or risk units uh, i don't care it's uh, just a number so we start with one then we have a loser we have to double to double to double and so on and so forth so you see what happens if you that would occur 21 times in a row then we would have to increase our um, amount of risk to already nearly 1 million a disaster complete disaster okay on the other hand you know that uh, to be 21 times on the loser side uh, will not happen that often but to increase your risk to 1 million times um, I think um, not everybody can survive uh, uh, that kind of situation but anyhow let's think a little bit uh, earlier here maybe after five times we have a winner then you see uh, we have to double, double, double. And now with the fifth trade here, we recover our account. That's great. But now let's do something different. Let's think about that we don't use a risk reward ratio of one. Let me go first back to in the, uh, into the chart. Let's assume that we take a risk reward ratio of Two, so that we would place always our take profit the double distance of our range like that well uh, red line here now it would take a little bit longer until we would reach here exactly that kind of take profit level but the good thing now is if we go for higher risk reward ratios we don't have to double and that's already incorporated into that Excel sheet here as well. And um, uh, that is not the final Excel sheet for the trading. It's just for illustration purposes. Um, you will see later we, we come with an Excel sheet with um, prices, historical data, and we, then we do that uh, with real trades. Let's go for a risk reward ratio of two. The good thing is, in order to 
we cover, we don't have to double anymore our risk. Uh, to be more precise, we would have to, uh, we would need a factor of 1.5 in this case. Let's think back to our situation that the fifth trade now um, should be the the winner one. So I just put a one here. Then you see we recover. We finally have in our account an earning of two, exactly our risk reward ratio. So all the losers before have been recovered. But now the difference is after five trades, we are at a factor of five and not as before with a factor of 16. You see what happens? We don't need to increase our risk value by such a big factor like as a previous case. And even if I take out the winner here, let's go back to uh, a loser sequence of 21 losers from our original factor of 1 million we now are down to 3,000. That's still a huge number, I know. But maybe we can go for risk-reward ratio of 3 or risk-reward ratio of 5. And then those numbers of our final risk value um, come down to levels which I think they are still doable in a real account. You may think, hey, is there a trick? No, absolutely no trick. Um, it's what we do here is because we, we need a higher risk reward ratio that enables us to not have a factor which is always doubling, but we buy, let's call it, uh, let's say I buy that advantage by the fact that my final trade has a higher risk reward ratio. And now let's go back to, to here. And remember what I mentioned already in my introduction. What we need are underlyings, which have at least from time to time, more trendy behavior. The loser part of that kind of strategy are those sideward, sideward's faces. It's an absolute disaster for such kind of strategy. If after a sequence of losers, then we have a real breakout, which is long lasting and goes further into one direction, then we can recover all the losses before. And since we now, our final trade has a higher risk reward ratio, and all the others would have uh, had the same risk reward ratio, but we never hit it, hit uh, our take profit level. If we have finally a situation like here, then even a higher risk reward ratio, and this would be pff, about a, f a risk reward ratio of five, uh, just as a rough estimate here, we would have reached our target value and we would could recover all the losses before. So that's the real setup as discussed with Martin. So starting with an open range breakout and then um, doing the risk adjust adjustment, not by doubling, uh, just with a um, um, lower value, a, lower, uh, a smaller factor. Uh, and the formula is uh, quite simple. It's uh, just a one plus uh, one divided by the risk reward ratio. That's uh, the complete formula, how we have to uh, calculate that kind of factor. Now I want to, to convert, to transform, or to incorporate that kind of logic into an Excel sheet uh, so that we can have real price data and a real uh, trading strategy. Now it become, becomes a little bit complicated because those range breakouts, for example, um, have a specific problem in, in managing in Excel and especially manage, managing sell stop and uh, sell 
uh, and sell stop and buy, no, <laughs> sell stop and buy stop orders is a little bit tricky because finally when it comes here to candles and we we need those candles i sometimes don't know what event has been first so if i would place such a buy stop order i can realize that in excel as well but maybe already the same candle is set huge that it would reach a stop loss value within the same can candle as well and now i get lost in excel and especially what i don't know is what event has been first triggering the stop loss or triggering my buy it stop um, trade for example so since i don't know what, what has been first uh, so i'm lost um, the solution for that is going to uh, smaller time frames um, and then we we definitely know what event has been first but then we get extremely huge excel sheets so let's modify the strategy a little bit and the modification is really simple we don't talk anymore about open range breakouts we just start a trade sequence and with a trade sequence what i mean is okay at some point within the chart let's say here with the open of that candle we start a trade and in order to to be on the wrong side i start a long trade no breakout we just start with the open of a candle a trade and let's think uh, negative and we open here a long trade and let's assume we have a stop loss value which is the other red line here so only a few minutes later a few candles later our trade would have been tra um, would have been in the stop loss here so and the stop loss would be already that candle here and then what we do now is not placing a sell stop order directly at that level no we wait until the next candle the next candle will be the open of our next trade in this case within that candle our stop loss would have been reached and the open of the next candle is here what we do now is we open a short trade that's good but we apply the same rule of stop loss setting so the distance of the stop loss for that trade is now here a little bit higher so the same distance like the first trade and then it's up to us where's our take profit level so let's think we would have a take profit of um, about two times uh, away from from um, our range here and then you see some hours later we would have reached our um, take profit level so the difference now is whenever a trade is opened we open the trade with the open of a candle that's the, the rule we apply still the same logic of how far away is our stop loss so that's still the same but now our range what has been um, previously static is now moving around a little bit um, that and by the way sometimes even helps already like our entry of the second trade here uh, would have been at a better position than just to have the other order already in place the sell stop order to the south here we in this case here we uh, would have a better entry for the second trade and now we reach already with the second trade our target and in this case the target would be two uh, with a risk reward ratio of two so everything is now fine being now here what happens next we open immediately the next trade immediately means with the next candle uh, let me put this line here with the next candle we open our next trade 
And once again, since our trade before has been a short trade, now we open a long trade. And we play around with the same numbers. So we get a stop loss about this distance. And now about the red line here would be our take profit level. Unfortunately, we hit here the stop loss and so on and so forth. You see the logic? I hope so. So now let's summarize our setup and then translate everything to an Excel sheet which really generates trades. So the strategy runs the following. The trade is always entered with the open of the next candle. So we simply start somewhere in the chart uh, or in the history. We open a trade with the open of a candle, just mark it. Um, our trade has a stop loss. We put it uh, later in a certain distance. And in this case, we don't use, because we don't have a real range, like uh, open break, uh, open range breakouts with, with typical times and then uh, price ranges. No, we just uh, apply a multiple of an RTR, the, the average true range. And that gives us a value where to set our stop loss. And then, then multiple with a risk reward ratio we get our take profit that's all so both are calculated straightforward then if our first trade is negative then we increase the risk for the next trade and by that kind of factor oh i have to change to english risk reward ratio and that's what we do the next trade is opened with the open of the next candle that's the rule and we once again place a stop loss we place our take profit and so on and so forth finally if the trade is positive then our risk goes down to our original value let's call it one that's all that's the strategy and we can now look for uh, such a strategy uh, in a real excel sheet and um, you you may know i don't go in detail through the excel sheet just to, to guide you a little bit of what happens here so we have the price data here then we um we calculate uh, the uh, the average true range in this case i apply a period of 22 because of uh, d1 normally when when it goes to d1 i use exactly that that uh, atr period um, simply because that's a month um, but you may take other values as well and yeah for this kind of strategy we need to start uh value or so start um direction um in this case um it's a minus one stands for short but you if i put that to one you see the overall equity which is here in the left um, doesn't really change so it has not uh, a huge impact when and how we start what we use here we calculate always the stop loss value um, as a multiple of um, our atr and take profit uh, for the trade and then we always look is it a stop loss or take profit reached within that uh, candle or then the following candles and just in case um, that both happens simultaneously within one candle then we apply that worst case scenario that we always think the stop loss has been reached first and finally what we do here in the excel sheet as well is we uh, we look for our risk unit we start with one and then later we increase our risk if we have losers and that is done by this uh, formula and uh, we calculate the factor and uh, we apply that factor for the next trade that's all and now we have an equity here within excel and it's already not that bad i would say you may uh, ask you, uh, yourself what does it mean if here we have a number like 500 that's just um, the universal risk value 1r and you can translate that to any euro value just by multiplying with a typical risk you use for your trading let's say you um, would risk um, 100 euro per trade then after that period of time you would have earned uh, 50,000 euro. So it's just uh, multiplying 
the euro value for your risk um, to that number. You see what happens. Typically, everything is quite smooth and we get a good equity. And by the way, um, we are looking here for 17 years history of um, euro, US dollar. Um, so it's a long period, L lots of trades. So it's uh, 700 trades here. And but what we see from time to time, we have those kind of dips, but they are not too heavy. Or what we can look here within the Excel sheet as well is what is our average multiplier um, we we have here in place. And the average multiplier here is about three. So most of the trades run with a multiple of 3R. So that's the typical risk. Typical risk. From time to time, we have to increase. But you will see that's not all. We can get it a little bit better here. So formally speaking, our strategy has two degrees of freedom. One is the stop loss distance as a multiple to the ATR. And the other one is the risk reward ratio uh, for the trade itself. And those are the two parameters we can play around here, like uh, in other strategies where you have different um, EMA values or whatever number you have, um, times for breakouts, um, and so on. Here we have two degrees of freedom, multiple for setting the stop loss as a multiple to the ATR, and the risk reward ratio of the trade itself. And Let's change, for example, the numbers here from uh, 1 to 1 1.3. Um, and we get always a change in the equity. Everything is calculated. Uh, we may increase uh, our risk-reward ratio here. And you see that our, our maximum um, multiplier uh, went down, which is good. Um, but we lose a little bit profitability. Maybe we increase that a little bit further. Okay. And we put the uh, stop loss a little bit uh, further away. Let's say, for example, here. And finally, we may have a strategy like this one here. So now our maximum factor for, for uh, our risk is 17. And uh, we have still... A profitable equity it does not look that bad um, and that's all so how does it work in practice in practice it would mean we open a trade uh, we we um, set a stop loss we set a take profit and then we wait in after that hour when that trade has come to an end if this take profit value has been reached everything is fine just with the next candle, we open the next trade to the opposite direction. Um, and still we have our original risk of one. If the first trade has been a loser, in this case, we would have to multiply our original risk value with 1.4 about. And we go for the next trade in the opposite direction, starting with the next candle, with the open of the next candle. And that's all we do. That's the complete sequence of those kind of trades. To show you a little bit, if we have such an Excel sheet here, how can we optimize uh, such a, a strategy? The good thing is if you finally use, for example, the real Microsoft Excel and not the LibreOffice like I do um, most of the time, but when it comes to optimization, I even switch to the Microsoft Excel because here for, for LibreOffice, I would have to install Java uh, Java, which I don't want to do, but let's switch uh, here to uh, the, the real Excel. And what you can do here, um, you can use a very nice um, formula because what you, you can use is the so-called solver. And um, that tool, that solver tool uh, has a, a capability to optimize whatever. And to optimize whatever, of course, needs a parameter. And as always for my strategies, I have that uh, parameter opti, 
which describes in summary the, the equity. Um, the lower the value, the better. And uh, you will see uh, more details about in previous uh, webinars where I introduced uh, those key figures here. And um, then the solver is trying to minimize that value. And what it needs, it needs some other cells, and those are the two yellow one here, uh, to to uh, manipulate, to change. Um, and you give uh, certain ranges for those cells, and then the rest is done by the computer, computer itself. That's all. And then you get uh, those parameters, and you can try that iteratively because it's not a de deterministic um, kind of solution for such a problem so um, not every time the result is the same um, that has some mathematical reasons here i don't want to go in those details but then you can end up with some values for your stop loss multiplier and your risk reward ratio since i invite you to to um, to put other um, underlines into the table here. Um, just one remark, please don't forget to change the spread um, because uh, the spread uh, has to be uh, within those trades as well. Um, and so don't, uh, especially if you go for, for example, ducks, uh, then you need definitely other numbers than for Euro, uh, US dollar, but you can see it's not the bad, uh, not not a worse strategy here. Um, maximum risk multiplier is about nine. We have a good uh, equity slope, and not those, not that huge drawdowns. So it works not that bad. And I mentioned uh, that I will show you uh, a few few other underlyings, for example, euro, uh, Japanese yen, um, to have another example here. And you see it uh, works well here as well. Okay, let's excel. And you see we get quite well equities here. Okay, here we have a little bit higher maximum risk multiplier. Um, but on the other hand, um, the equity is quite straight. Lots of trades, perfect. So next underlying Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Um, here we we have in average a risk multiplier of 1.8, which is really a low value. One time we have uh, been at 12, um, but you see how it develops here. So that is an example for Australian dollar, and Japanese yen, and um, I have all those numbers on a summary slide as well, so uh, you don't have to write them down but you can play around with those sheets uh, as well let's look for another trendy underlying um, and now we go for the ducks or the, the price data here are from from uh, the f ducks and you see an even better underlying uh, better equity here <clears throat> with uh, less drawdowns a higher slope um, so <clears throat> drawdown here is only that we have a maximum factor of 25. So that we must have in mind when we apply those kind of strategies, that we are able, <clears throat> at least in this case once, to have a multiplier of 25. Um, but this within 17 years. So it's a long period uh, we have investigated with that kind of of approach here. You can think even about smaller time frames, and um, I have done some work on that as, as well. Um, just that you see how it in principle can work. I put into the table here three years uh, H1 of uh, Euro US dollar, and um, even that is not that bad. Um, so risk. Is the risk reward ratio is getting higher here, uh, which is good because then we we don't have um, that huge value of highest risk fact factor. Um, 
So in principle, it works for smaller time frames. But I know uh, if you want to trade that kind of strategy manually, uh, then H1 may be not the best choice because you'll have to be um, um, you have to trade in the night as well. So uh, there's no time to sleep. So that would not be the best one. Uh, only if you have an expert advisor, then. Uh, that expert advisor can do the job as well. So you see, the logic of that strategy works. We can tame the risk a little bit. So we don't have to double anymore uh, always our amount, like in the uh, for the um, introduction case of uh, the roulette table, uh, with always doubling our risk. We can go to quite small numbers, like here in this case that we increase our risk by a factor 1.2 only, which is uh, better. But this, I repeat myself, on the cost of that finally we need a trade which goes for more away um, with a longer distance for the take profit. So we have that higher final risk reward ratio of the trade. So that's, let's call it the downside but if you have an underlying which from time to time goes really in one direction that's perfect that's our trade and uh, then we can recover the losses previously let me summarize a little bit um, <clears throat> what we have done here and how it really works so we have a couple of uh, setups here um, and I have even one additional variant for the um, for the FDAX. Um, I go don't go into the details right now. It's more or less like um, whenever you start a new sequence, then you start that sequence always lo long. Why? Because we know that at least for the last decades, the DAX has a bias and that bias is always north. So whenever we start a new sequence, we start the sequence with a long trade. Um, even in case our previous winner trade has been a long trade as well. In, the, in between, we do short trades as well. But um, whenever it comes to a new sequence, then we open that sequence with a long trade. So that's the logic uh, with FDAX long start. So let me summarize a little bit what we have done here today. We have, a couple of months ago, we have had already one strategy on not the same logic. It's really quite different because at that time it was more a rebuy strategy with a more grid approach, um, not doubling or even any factor of um, a lot size increase or a risk increase. So at that time, the taming had a, has had two aspects. One finds the right underlines and the other one has been um, those rebuy activities. Now our taming is once again by finding the right underlines, which are those which are exactly opposite to the previous selection. Now we want to have underlines with a slightly trendy behavior. At least from time to time, they should move in one direction a little bit longer because those are the ones um, which um, generate our profits. So the taming here is today with, and once again, I have the German abbreviation for risk reward ratio of bigger than one, but still I have to mention it's risky, of course. What we can realize from our Excel sheet that those kind of approaches are quite profitable, so why not? And now it comes to that final sentence because it offers the three, three ways of thinking finally about that kind of martingale approaches. Still you can think and um, I mean, still you can think that martingale is always work of a devil and um, you don't put your fingers on that. That's one possibility. The other one is you may, may think it can be an interesting variant for my own trading activities but you have to know what you do and just 
always doubling your, uh, if you have a loser, then double your risk for the next one, um, is definitely not the right choice. So we know now how to tame that a little bit on the cost of higher risk reward ratios. And there may be even, uh, let's call them the third people, uh, the other ones, which at least realize that we know exactly what we do via Excel sheet. And if you come to that point, I'm always glad because what I personally don't want is that anybody is entering the next trade, just saying, that looks good, I go for that trade. No, what we need for trading is always, we need an investigation of our basic idea of that kind of approach, not just saying, I go long Euro, US dollar because it looks quite well. No, that's not enough. We need a confirmation and that confirmation we need out of the past, out of the history. And if we can say for our trading approach, our trading setup, that it has been at least profitable in the past, then we have one good argument to do those kind of trades. And that's what I recommend always in my webinars. Before we enter a trade, we should know that we have a statistical edge for that kind of approach. And only, and only if we can prove that kind of edge, that kind of probability advantage, then we should trade. And that's how I do my trading and that's um, how I always recommend uh, going for the next trade that we really know what we are doing. Yeah, that's for today. A little bit Martingale, a little bit Excel and I hope you enjoyed uh, that webinar as well. Once again, if you have interest in any slides, in the, the slides can be downloaded, but uh, if you have uh, forgotten to download or if you want to have those Excel sheets, just send me an email. You see the email address here, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. Yeah, and before I really come to an end, uh, because it's the uh, last webinar for this year, uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year when it comes to that in two weeks from now. Oh, then it's already, uh, we are already in the new year. I hope you will be back to our webinars next year. And as I announced already, it will start with change your perspective to the broker. And then um, we come to Bitcoins, an interesting topping as well. And it's really a hot topic. So enjoy your time. Have a good time um, during the years. And um, yeah, bye-bye.